Hey, what's up guys? It's Sal here and this is a bit of an unusual comparison. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 1 and this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. This is the Note 10 Plus and this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 1. Yeah, so this is the very first Note we've ever had from Samsung and this is the Note 10 Plus which was released three days ago. In this video, we're going to take a sort of deep dive and we're going to be comparing both flagships of their times and how they've impacted the generation of smartphones. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Okay, so the first thing I'll talk about is the release date. Now, both these phones are slash were flagships of their time, depending on when you're watching this video. Now, to start with, the Samsung Galaxy Note 1 or the original Note is a 5.3 inch display device that was launched in October of 2011. And this was around the time when the size of smartphones started to become something of importance. Now, this was the time when the word phablet came into play. And yes, the Samsung Galaxy Note 1 is the device that publicized the word phablet. And around the same time, the iPhone of this time was the iPhone 4. It was launched on October of 2011 as well. It was 3.1 inch, it has a lower resolution than the Samsung Galaxy device then. And there was like a fight between these two devices, you know, iPhone 4S versus Samsung Galaxy Note 1. And as a refresher, if you're a Nigerian, that was the year that we had the general election that got President Goodluck Jonathan elected. Um, we've come a long way. Fast forward nearly eight years now, we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, a 6.8 inch device that was launched on the 7th of August this year or three days ago. And the Note 1 has since been discontinued. Now, there's a lot of modern apps that won't work on this device, but more on that later in this video. As far as the display goes, we've got a super AMOLED display on this guy, the Note 1, 800 by 1280 pixels and a PPI of 285 and it has a screen to body ratio of 66.5. And then we've got the Note 10 Plus dynamic AMOLED display is what Samsung is calling it, 1440 by 3040 pixels, 498 PPI, nearly double Note 1 and it's got a crazy 91% screen to body ratio, probably the highest screen to body ratio I've seen on a device if I'm not mistaken. And the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus also has HDR10 Plus display. Now looking at the front of both phones, we see so much difference on the Note 10 Plus and the Note 1. First of all, Note 10 Plus is a 91% screen to body ratio. The only thing you see is a cutout and the touch buttons. While on the Note 1, you've got so much bezel on here. Menu button, back button, home button, Samsung branding, earpiece, everything is up at the top. And when you double tap the home button, you'll see voice talk, which is similar to Bixby on the Note 10 Plus. Video quality on the Note 1 looked really impressive actually, even now that I look at it. and Yes, of course, we've got bezels and considering that it was 2011, this Super AMOLED display was not a bad option back then. You know, except for the big bezels that you have now comparing it to the Note 10 Plus, you know, this had a huge resolution back then. Both of them have picture in picture and you can just do something else while you're watching video. On the Note 1, there is significant lag in this mode and you can tell the difference when compared to the Note 10 Plus. Build quality is something that Samsung has always taken pride in and it's evident in the original Note. You know, on the back of the original Note 1, we've got plastic and a dotted style pattern on the back for grippability. And both of them have Gorilla Glass. Gorilla Glass 6 on the Note 10 Plus and just Gorilla Glass on the Note 1. Now, the sides of the Note 1 are simply coated while the sides of the Note 10 Plus is aluminum. And as far as the ports and I.O., we've got a headphone jack, something that is missing on the new Note 10. RIP headphone jack. While on top of the Note 10 Plus, we've got a hybrid SIM slot. There is no expandable storage on the regular Note 10, but there is on the Note 10 Plus. We've also got a secondary speaker at the top and a microphone. Mind you, the Note 10 and the 10 Plus have three microphones. On the right side of the Note 1, we've got a power button, but nothing on the Note 10 Plus. Now, the Note 10 Plus kind of removed the power button in place of a side button, which is why we have only two buttons to the side. The Note 1 only has volume rockers, while the Note 10 Plus has volume rockers and the remappable side button key, where you can double press to open the camera or any app of your choosing. And when you press and hold, it either turns on Bixby or powers it off. On the bottom of the Note 1, we've got a regular USB port with the S Pen to the side, while on the Note 10, we've got a microphone, USB-C port, speakers, and the new S Pen. The Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus are IP68 to dust and what waterproof devices. It's waterproof for up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes, but there's nothing of the sort on the Note 1. Please don't try to put this phone underwater. There will be problems if you try it. In terms of weight, the Note 1 and the Note 10 Plus aren't too far off as far as their weight distribution. It's just 27 grams of difference. And you can't really tell. The Note 1 gives an illusion that it's a much heavier device because of how wide it is. The Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus have a special selection of colors. Six color options, Aura Glow, which is the reflective trendy version, Aura White, 
aura black which i have here and then there's pink red and blue the, i think the blue version is reserved for the note 10 plus while the note 1 has three colors the black which i have here white and pink on the note 1 we've got samsung's exynos 4210 dual core 45 nanometer chipset while on the note 10 plus it's an exynos 9825 chipset for the uk it's snapdragon 855 for the us both seven nanometer chipsets and this is faster of course you know that the smaller the nanometer the faster it is eight years later the note 10 plus is 6.4 times faster in processing power based on the nanometer number alone is this a big deal to you let me know in the comment section down below also the ram situation is not even friendly at all one gigabyte of ram here 12 gigabytes of ram here and as far as the storage you get a minimum of 250 gigabytes on the note 10 plus here 16 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes mine is 16 gigabytes and it's almost even filled up you can expand the storage on the note 10 plus by one terabyte here it's just 64 gigabytes but you can upgrade the note 10. okay so we'll do a quick comparison for app opening and we'll see which is faster as you can see the cache is cleared and i have no recently used apps the first app we'll open is the dialer app <laughs> Then we'll open the camera app and we'll change the mode to video. Play Store, we'll search Instagram. Settings, and then we'll open the About section. Google Chrome. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to multitasking and opening back the first app. Yes, it will take some time on the Note 1 because it's just one gigabyte of RAM. However, I'm saying that the Note 1 actually reloads app to the same position it was before, despite being slow. And I think this is a good thing. Gaming on the Note 1 was actually pretty impressive. I started with a 2D game vector and it ran really smoothly with no lag. Then I tried a bit of Smash Hit, which is a 3D game, and it did well, so well actually in the medium graphics, but when I switched it to the high graphics, that's when the lag started coming in. I also played Riptide GP, which is a pure 3D game, and it also did quite well, although the water didn't render out quite nicely. On the Play Store, you can download games like Temple Run and even PUBG for understandable reasons. And on the Note 10, all the games I played were super smooth. It, I didn't experience any lag in similar games, but only tiny lags in PUBG because it's quite heavy. Anyway, about the battery performance, the Note 1 did last me about four to five hours of heavy use, despite having 2,500 milliamp hour battery. But this guy doubles it for me with 4,300 milliamp hour battery for up to 11 hours. Now, as far as the Android version, this came shipped with Android 2.3 gingerbread, oh gingerbread, and updates publicly stopped at 4.1 jelly bean, but I have Android 4.0 here, ice cream sandwich, and for some reason, I can't upgrade my software. About the user interface, nothing major, but I noticed that Instagram still has the old logo. This is a skeuomorphic interface, whereas the Note 10 Plus is flat and modern, you know, very, very cute. The Play Store still works here though, on the Note 1, and there are a few apps that you can install on it. And of course, you can't install modern apps. Even the Samsung App Store for the S Pen still works well. WhatsApp works well. The Bluetooth version on the Note 1 is Bluetooth 3.0. I feel like people don't even talk about Bluetooth 3.0 anymore. While on the Note 10 Plus, of course, you've got Bluetooth 5.0. There is a single backward firing speaker on the Note 1, which is just sounding fine. While on the Note 10 Plus, it's dual speakers tuned by AKG for stereo audio, and there's also Dolby Atmos option. As far as sound quality, here's how they both perform. So this is how my voice sounds on each device. Let me know what you think about the sound quality coming right out of these devices in the comment section down below. So this is how my voice sounds on each device. Let me know what you think about the sound quality coming right out of these devices in the comment section down below. Now they did both sound fine, you know, 10 plus of course sounded much better and I like how the music was presented well. Now speaking of music, if you've been watching my videos, you probably know I only use Musicbed for all the videos on my channel recently and 
that's because of how amazing their service and the songs on there are. Now, Musicbed is a really dope place to get music for your next YouTube video, for your next project, for your next film, you name it, they've got you covered. And I don't only use Musicbed, companies like Nike, Samsung, Google, Facebook, and a host of others use their service. And about pricing, it starts at $9.99, which is just like Netflix. And if you hit the link in the description, musicbed.fisayofostudio.com, get a 30-day free trial and can also get started with amazing music for your next piece, your next YouTube video, or short film. And on that note, I look forward to what you create. All right, now we'll get to the cameras on these notes. The Note 1 has a single 8 megapixel camera on the back f2.6, which is 28 millimeters wide with autofocus and flash. That is all. It records 1080p at 24 and 30 frames per second. And on the front, we only get a 2 megapixel camera. On the back of the Note 10 Plus, it's a triple camera setup, 12 megapixel main shooter with dual aperture, 12 megapixel telephoto, 16 megapixel wide angle, and a time of flight sensor for 3D mapping and flash. It shoots 4K at 30 and 60 FPS, HDR 10 Plus, dual video recording with the dual microphones, optical image stabilization, and electronic image stabilization. And on the front, it's a 10 megapixel wide camera with dual pixel autofocus. It can do dual video calls and it can also shoot 4K in 30 FPS. Pictures on both cameras are obviously worlds apart, but that's of course expected. First off, the selfies were pretty much the kicker. There are a lot of obvious differences between a 2 megapixel selfie camera and a 10 megapixel camera which has been fine-tuned for up to eight years. Still, it's not that bad and it can be used in some settings. The back camera on these devices have their separations in the details of the shots. The natural blur on the Note 10 Plus really outshines the lack of depth on the Note 1. And in terms of colors, you can see the images just speak for themselves. The Note 1 is barely manageable when you see them standing side by side. Blur quality was okay and saturation was just a little bit overdone on the Note 1. Also, autofocus was not even manageable on the Note 1. I kept getting blurry photos from moving subjects and the Note 10 Plus just kept being amazing. In terms of video quality, as I said, the Note 10 Plus records 4K compared to 1080p on the Note 1 and there is no stabilization on the Note 1. The Note 10 Plus was pretty much steady throughout. All right, so this is the front facing camera video quality of the Samsung Galaxy Note 1, the first Samsung Galaxy Note by my right, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. This is a huge difference in quality and yo, I, I don't even know what to say. This is just a testament to how, how far technology has been. Uh, this is, uh, there's optical image stabilization, but there's no optical image stabilization on the first one. And it didn't even allow me to record immediately from the front facing camera. I had to choose self recording mode on the Note 1. But here, uh, there's you know autofocus lock, all these fancy features. You can actually choose to reduce the exposure in the background, you know, high dynamic range, all these amazing features. Uh, yeah, so this is what uh, the whole Note lineup looks like from the beginning till now. Let me know what you guys think about the video quality in the comment section down below. I think the first S Pen was way ahead of its time because when you consider one of the main features that was highlighted on the Note 10 Plus, you see what I mean. So basically, the new S Pen on the Note 10 Plus, like I mentioned in my 24-hour review, link in the description, it has a mode where you can write and just tap a button and converts what you scribbled into text. Well, welcome to 2011 because back then, as you can see here, when you write, the S Pen just converts it to text for you almost immediately in real time. I'm not sure how exactly this was received back then, but it's very interesting. And if I can remember correctly, the Note series was pushed more to business-minded people because of how everything was laid out, the sketching, the drawing, the calendars. While the new S Pen is actually super improved because it has a gyroscope, you know, can control things like make it look like a magic wand. But the old S Pen was pretty much a novelty. And now it looks like that was all it was. To take a screenshot on the old Note 1, you simply take the pen out, press and hold the side button and put it on the screen for just a few seconds and that's it. There are two other gesture controls for the menu, I get to swipe up and you can also go back when you swipe left. On the new S Pen here on the Note 10 Plus, you get a whole lot of features, you can even customize your own menus and you can check out my review in the description as well, I explained everything. So this Note 1 in 2019 cost 30,000 Naira right now. It used to cost upwards of 95,000 Naira back then or $300, which is interesting. And in 2012, the Note 1 sold 10 million copies. However, the Note 10 Plus cost a lot, over 380,000 Naira or $1,099. 
Now, can this Note 1 be used in 2019? Of course, but not really. Maybe if you want to use it to make phone calls and you have that huge SIM, but almost no provider sells that SIM anymore. So many apps are not supported. This device is going to hinder you a lot, but it can communicate, it can make phone calls and stuff. However, you know, 10 Plus is racing to be the best thing in people's pockets, and I can't wait to see what happens, you know, on the 23rd of August when it comes out. This is a lot of improvement. What are your thoughts on this video? Do hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and drop a comment down below if you have any questions. Let's have a chat in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when I drop a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in my next video.